Okay, guys, we want to take y'all on this journey about living off the land and the way that our forefathers lived off the land, some of the things that they looked for on property whenever they were purchasing it and squatting on it or homesteading it, whichever way they were trying to get it, and our Native Americans, exactly, they did the same thing. One of the first things you want to look for is a source of water. Now here at Deep South Homestead, we have this source of water here. It just runs out of the ground and runs down through our property. It's a, it's a necessity. It is the number one thing you look for on a piece of property when you buy it. If you don't have that right there, uh, there's no way you can be sustainable. You have to have water, for not only for yourself, uh, if you plan on having livestock or anything else like that, you need a source of water that runs year-round. Okay, guys, one of the things that we're going to talk about today, actually going to be several things we're going to talk about today. Uh, first, it's going to be a little bit of wildlife. Our forefathers depended on wildlife to be able to fill the meat needs in the family because a lot of them didn't, didn't come with, an, uh, with enough animals to be able to... Uh, I guess you'd say to be able to have enough to kill and eat. So they depended on things like quail and squirrels and deer and rabbits, uh, things like that, elk, buffalo, all these different things they depended on. They went out into the wild and hunted them. And we're going to show you a few clips of those things here also that we have at Deep South Homestead. Now, another thing that um, we want to talk about is wild edibles in the woods. Our forefathers and the Native Americans knew that when they chose a piece of property, they chose property that had these native wild plants on them. Now, beside me right here, this is a wild blueberry tree that grows on our place here. We found this growing in the woods as we was clearing, and you can see how big it is. It, it encompasses everything in here and it goes up real big uh, we're going to try to get it cleaned out around so that we can uh, harvest the berries off of it right now the birds and the squirrels get everything that comes on the tree but as soon as we get it cleaned around real good we'll hopefully we'll be able to harvest a few of them for ourselves but this is a native wild blueberry tree okay the tree you see right here this is a native wild huckleberry you notice we have a ribbon tied on it we tie we go around in the spring when they have huckleberries on them and when we locate one we tie the ribbon on it that way we know it's a huckleberry the huckleberry has a lot a little smaller leaf uh, made just a little bit different uh, the trees will have multiple green stems like this one here growing up on it all these green they'll have green woodwork on it here in the south that's how you tell the difference between a huckleberry and the other wild winter huckleberry, which is not edible here. Now this here is what's called a smilax vine. Now this thing, the roots on them are used for medicinal purposes. Uh, here at Deep South Homestead, we have these things by the thousands, and we try to keep them pushed up, and I'll show you why. You see these thorns on them? That's what happens when you let these vines get old and they mature. Now I'm going to roll it around right here where you can get a better look at the thorns on it. This is a mature vine. When these vines are first shooting out of the ground and they're very young and tender, they grow extremely fast. They're edible just like asparagus. They'll pop out of the ground right here. And they'll make a little long, tall, green shoot. It's real flexible and real soft. 
and you can grow along and break them off and eat them just like asparagus. Now, our Native Americans and our forefathers in the spring would go around and gather these things and eat them like asparagus. And the root here, as you can see, you can peel it back. It's almost like an artichoke. Uh, a lot of our early forefathers used this particular root here. Uh, it's called uh, sarsaparilla. Uh, they used it in making root beers and different types of drinks with, along with the uh, sassafras. Okay, this plant here is called a beauty berry. We have these things on our property by the thousands. Uh, we usually try to keep them put down, but the, these leaves we use for uh, insect repellent. Uh, the berries, uh, some people say they eat the berries, make jellies out of them and stuff, and our Native Americans and our forefathers done the same thing. These leaves, when it comes hunting season, you can pull these leaves off and rub them on your arms. They give off an extreme odor, which makes you uh, repellent to insects, and the animals in the wild do not detect your human scent. Okay, we've got what we call native wild muscadines growing in the woods here. Um, you'll look under here. You'll see they have, this is the size that the little wild ones get. They're extremely sweet. The animals love them. People used to go around through the woods and gather them up to uh, make pies and different things out of. Okay, guys, this is how big some of the grapevines get here in the woods at Deep South that grows wild in our woods here. You can see, see this one right here, how it comes up and it turns, and then there's all these others back in here. All these are just, these are all big, uh, big old grapevines that just run up in the trees. Okay, hey guys, what we got here, uh, I think the native name for this is yucca. Uh, but our forefathers, uh, my ancestors, told me they called it bull grass because it's as tough as a bull. You can, um, you can take these blades off of it here. They can be used to, uh, for a number of things. They can be used to weave baskets out of. Uh, my father told me when he was a kid they used to um, take the ends of them you could grab them in the middle and you can split it like that all the way down and he said they would cut those off at the bottom and they would hang meat in the smokehouse with them so they have a lot of different uses and then parts of the root is actually uh, medicinal another one of the trees we have growing here on our homestead is the sassafras here now the sassafras leaves there'll be three different types of leaves on it on the same tree here we have a single leaf which they look just like that. Right below it is a triple lobe, and then you'll find some occasionally that would just be a double lobe. Uh, I don't know that, yeah, right here. Here's one right here. So these are some of the things that you'll look for on a sassafras tree. Now when you pull this particular tree up, the root will have a strong root beer smell to it. This is a young one, just sprouting up here. A lot of our forefathers would take and make a sassafras tea out of the root of this particular tree. When these trees mature and get to be big old trees, the heart in them will not rot. A lot of forefathers use the heart of them a lot of time for fence posts and different things like that where they needed ground contact with wood. Uh, it's extremely light. It will float in the water. Uh, you can make boat paddles out of it. I have a boat paddle right now made out of it. so. It has a lot of uses once it gets to be a large tree and you can split it and use it for different things. The heart will not rot. I also made some of my spoons that I had um, after Hurricane Katrina. Blew some of the big timber down on our property here. We had it sawed up with a sawmill. And predominantly most of the spoons that I've made has been from sassafras trees. Now there's a, some of them here lately where I ran out of sassafras. I've been using maple, but we did use the sassafras because the spoons will never rot. Okay, this is another native tree here at Deep South Homestead. This is called a hickory nut. This tree was used by our forefathers and the Native Americans. The nuts are edible. Uh, they make fantastic pies and cakes and stuff like that. Not only that, the wood from this tree is extremely hard. The Native Americans used it to uh, make their bows out of uh, for shooting a bow and arrow. Uh, it was used for handles, for axes, and throws, and all kind of different things because the wood is extremely hard and it's extremely flexible. Okay guys, this is what we call a persimmon tree. Uh, these grow wild here at Deep South Homestead. We have 
bunches of them on our property. The fruits on them are edible in the fall when they turn dark orange. They're extremely sweet. Uh, they're very astringent before then. They will actually draw your mouth up completely tight. Um, now this here uh, is a tree that grows on Deep South Homestead here. This is called a chinkapin. It is a distant cousin to the chestnut. The acorns in it is extremely edible, very good, used for making flowers and different things out of by the Native Americans and uh, the pioneers when they come through this area in the fall. Uh, these here is very stickery, like needles. Uh, these will open up and there's an acorn on the inside that's very edible. Uh, these trees uh, have fallen susceptible to the same blights that hit the massive chestnuts in the mountains. Uh, these trees will only get to be so big and then the blight will actually kill them out and they sprout back from the root again and it takes several years for them to come back. Okay guys, another thing that you look for on a piece of property for sustainability, our forefathers and Native of Americans look for acorns. Uh, on Deep South Homestead's property here, we're predominantly all oak trees. Now you'll notice around me here, all the treetops you're looking at in here are all oaks. Now in the background on the other property next to us, you'll see a few pines, but our property is predominantly all oak trees. These acorns can be uh, boiled and the tannins pulled out of them and then once they're dried they can be beat into flour and actually make bread and cakes out of. Not only that, they can also be used for animal feed. Hogs love them. Uh, hogs will fatten up on them real quick. Uh, the, only, the only thing with that is the fat will be extremely soft. You'll need to pull them off the acorns and give them corn for a couple of weeks to firm that fat up but they'll sure fatten up in the fall real quick. Now this particular plant that you're looking at here is called a polk salad. Uh, it's just about run its course. The berries have matured on it. Uh, our Native American friends use the berries for dye and different things. Now the plant, when it's extremely young and first shoots up, is edible. But when it gets to this stage, it becomes toxic and is not edible. So you have to really know about polk salad and how to use it. Uh, but the Native Americans and our forefathers I think completely understood uh, about using the poke salad. Okay guys, we've got another tree growing in the background here. If you look up right up there, this is a wild cherry tree. The berry um, can be used for making different things out of it. The pit of the seed is actually harmful, but um, the tree itself uh, had different medicinal uses to it for the Native Americans and our forefathers. Uh, today we've learned that the cherry tree, the wild cherry, carries a number of different diseases that strikes our peach trees and our apricot trees and a lot of different other kind of trees on the homestead. So I usually, when I get a chance to take one down, I take them down as fast as I can. The lumber is extremely beautiful. The heart of the tree will never rot. Makes some of the finest furniture you've ever seen. So the tree does have uh, it has uses as far as building furniture for the homestead um, and the fact that it doesn't rot and will last for, I've got some that's probably 30 to 40 years old, been out in the weather and I know it's still good. So they have a lot of uses for the homestead, the wild cherry tree. This is a wild fox grape. They grow in the woods here. Uh, wild out on Deep South Homestead. Uh, they make a little small tag of grapes that look just like regular grapes, but they're little tiny ones, not much bigger than a little pencil eraser. And then right below it here, these here, we have these. These are called dewberries. They're in the blackberry family. They don't make a cane. They make a vine that runs on the ground. We come over here in the woods uh, during the year, in the spring, and we pick... Uh, dewberries off of these because they're all over the ground here everywhere and they're, you don't realize it till you actually get to looking for them that they're actually in here but you can see they're growing in the grass here everywhere and you okay guys this tree here this is a maple tree it's a red maple on our property uh, the leaves are turning extremely early this year being August the 3rd uh, the leaves have already turned red, which is highly unusual. But these maple trees now can be tapped, uh, just like the sugar maples up north. 
and you can get a sap out of them that can be boiled down to make syrup out of so the our forefathers knew that and they also look for these things on the homestead now beside the maple there we have a willow tree this willow could it has multiple purposes on a homestead it has the bark uh, has a ability of, that you can use to make an aspirin like substance out of it the limbs can be they're very flexible they can be bent into making different types of furniture out of small pieces of the limbs can be soaked in water and a rooting hormone can be made out of them for rooting small plants and stuff like that in so this particular tree has multiple uses on a homestead okay guys when it comes to living on the land the first thing you want to look for is water like we showed you on the deep south homestead's first clip there is water we have a nice running stream on our homestead that's one of the things you want to look for uh, when you want to live off the land like we do uh, secondly is look for your wildlife you know what type of wildlife is available in your area we showed you we have some of the things that's available in our area we have deer turkeys uh, squirrels we have all these different things uh, quail rabbits these are things that make us sustainable here when we need meat in the winter time other thing is the wild edibles that's on the property you want to make sure that you have an abundance of wild edibles uh, search your area out find out what the native wild edibles are in your area and try to walk the land and make sure that it's on the property so that if you plan on living off the land uh, then these things are there that's what our forefathers done that's what the Native Americans done that's the reason they were so successful at surviving on the land and then look for look for the oaks and stuff like that and what types of woods are available on your land now we have hickory we have uh, oak we have maples sassafrases I mean you name it we have an array of different timbers on this particular piece of property um, even like this big old tree here behind me you know these are big giant trees been here for hundreds of years um, these are some of the things you want because these provide uh, these provide good shade for wildlife they provide acorns for the hogs and the wildlife to eat so that they're sustainable during the winter time which means that you're gonna have meat to eat if you have these type types of things on your homestead so I hope you've enjoyed some of these things we've showed you about living on the land uh, from deep south homestead you know I want to just say thank you for going along on this particular journey with us.